Bill O'Reilly here. Please watch this highlight from the No Spin News. To watch the full episode on demand, simply visit BillOReilly.com and become a subscriber today. I gave the stats to the folks. You don't quibble with any of those stats, do you? No, no, I certainly do not. Okay. So on based on your eyewitness reporting, because you were in these riots, many of them, what were the worst situations that you saw? Well, probably the worst place was Minneapolis was at the at the start of everything because just the country was just really unprepared because, you know, before everything was centered around COVID and the emergency response to that. So Minneapolis, in terms of scale, in terms of people who participate in the riots, in, in, in my opinion, what it was that I personally covered, it, it, it was the worst. I mean, yeah, we, we have these stats about people who, who, who were arrested. And don't get me wrong, obviously a lot of people were, but uh, I can just tell you that it doesn't really reflect uh, just really how how many people were partaking in this. I mean, just looting, vandalism, uh, even worse, you know, destruction, uh, probably setting things on fire. I mean, we're, we're talking about thousands of people in just in just one city, like like Minneapolis. And in, in that case, it's technically like two cities with, with, <laughs> with St. Paul being right next door, which also experienced some pretty extensive damage as well. So um, it, it's, it, it's a pretty damning indictment on our justice system. And, and you have to also think about kind of how, uh, what we're seeing today, right? I mean, the now, part of the reason well, why wait, we're wait, wait, seeing wait, wait. this crime let's, wave. Let's stay, let's stay with Minneapolis for a minute. Did the police in Minneapolis, when you were there and watching, did they do their job or did they stand down? Uh, they, they, they tried uh, to the best of their ability, but in, in, when I got onto the ground on that first Thursday outside the third precinct, which was the night when they were ordered to evacuate and it was eventually set on fire, but, but prior to that, they, they didn't have the manpower to stop uh, just the lawlessness that was happening. I mean, right across the street, uh, at, there was a whole, uh, uh, you know, stores and businesses like a Target and a grocery store, along with several other ones. Uh, that were just being looted uh, th- throughout the entire day, and the police and you say stop the cops because... didn't have enough people to stop it. I'm not. I'm not sure about that. I don't know if they because wanted they, to. They stop were. It. They were primarily. They were primarily focused on protecting the third precinct because. Uh, yeah, because they the, were store and they, the, and they yeah. burned down that precinct. They they failed in protecting it. That precinct was burned to the ground. So, I think I see it a little bit differently than you do. And remember, you have more credibility than I have because you were there and I was not there. But I don't think that the mayors of these towns wanted a strict enforcement of the anti-rioting laws. I don't, and I think that message was, the cops picked that message up. Now, you were also in Kenosha, Wisconsin, where uh, the infamous uh, Rittenhouse case took, uh, that's where that was. What did you see there? So with specifically the Rittenhouse case, I mean, well, first off, I mean, the, the context is that this happened in a riot. I mean, mainstream media has just con- consistently labeled the Rittenhouse shootings taking place during a protest, which is not the case at all. I mean, they, the rioters were attacking the county courthouse for a third night in the row. Uh, they, they were attacking the National Guardsmen. It wasn't just police anymore. But they were attacking National Guardsmen. And so uh, naturally, in response to that, the law enforcement pushed them away from the courthouse. The problem is, and again, this kind of goes back to manpower, uh, they, they pushed the rioters away from the courthouse towards the people who were protecting uh, private property from further damage because uh, in the previous days when they couldn't get close to the courthouse, they then decided to destroy other things that were unprotected. And so with the Rittenhouse case specifically, it's just, I mean, it just creates, when you have this power vacuum that's created uh, in these, you know, very chaotic uh, incidents, you're going to get examples like, like how Rittenhouse. As you may know, inflation is out of control thanks to the policies of this administration. Retirement accounts are especially vulnerable now. When inflation goes up, your savings goes down. Protect your hard-earned wealth against inflation. Please call the people I trust at American Heart for Gold. They will show you how to protect your savings by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. They are the highest rated firm in the country with an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. Takes just a short phone call and they will deliver physical gold and silver right to your door or put inside your IRA or 401k. Plus, tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you and they will give you up to $2,500 of free silver on your first order. So please don't wait. Call 866-501-5201. 
866-501-5201 or text Bill to 65532. Again, 866-501-5201 or text Bill to 65532. Bill O'Reilly here. Thank you for watching this video and make sure you subscribe to the First TV YouTube page. Just hit the big red subscribe button below and you'll get clips and highlights of my program, The No Spin News, every single day. We'll see you soon.